I now have the pleasure of introducing to you our commencement speaker for today's ceremony, Dr. Daniel J. Crowley. Dan is the Vice President of Raytheon Corporation and President of Raytheon Network-Centric Systems, where he leads 13,000 staff in over 60 locations around the world responsible for civil, commercial, and defense programs in areas such as air traffic control, homeland security, command and control, communications, and combat systems. Prior to becoming president of Raytheon, Dan had a very successful career at Lockheed Martin over a 27-year period, where he served as chief operating officer of Lockheed Martin Aeronautics. Dan, I was going to read the titles you held at Lockheed, uh, but looking at your resume, I think we'll just hold off on that and ask our uh, participants and audience to read your bio in the program. It is a very impressive list. Dan holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering and a Master of Science degree in Manufacturing Systems of Engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. He followed that with an MS in Management from Stanford University where he undertook that study as a Sloan Fellow. Dan and his wife, Suzanne, uh, Suzanne is in the audience today, and is a published author, very, very good author, have three children. Again, please read Dan's bio in the program when you have a moment, and you will see that we have picked the perfect person, the perfect engineer, to address our graduates today. Not only is Dan a Longhorn and a dedicated and loyal Longhorn, he continues to contribute to the university as a key member of the Engineering Advisory Board for the Cockrell School of Engineering. Uh, this is a group of industry leaders that help chart the strategic directions of the School of Engineering. And I have come to rely on Dan's insight and advice and strategic thinking a great deal. Dan is truly an engineering leader. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our distinguished commencement speaker, Dan Crowley. Thank you, Dean Fenvis. It's an honor to be here and to address the 2010 graduating class of the University of Texas Cockrell School of Engineering. 25 years ago, I had the honor of graduating from UT as well, and I remember the day clearly. My mother and father were there, as well as my bride-to-be, who's in the audience here today. Though we grew up 15 houses apart in Houston, we met for the first time in Austin at a party on Duval Street and had our first date at Cass's Deli down on 6th Street. And Suzanne went on to get her degree in journalism and to uh, achieve her dream of being a published author, uh, writing two books for HarperCollins. Now, while our two daughters attend SMU in Berkeley, I still hold out hope that my son Cameron will follow you all and graduate in the engineering class of 2022. Now, commencement marked for me, and I predict also for you, the start of an excellent adventure, one that will take you to places and provide experience that, experiences that you can only begin to imagine. Each of your adventures will be unique, shaped by your desires, hard work, luck, and timing. But before you can begin that journey, you have to go through this rite of passage called commencement. Now, our modern society has lost many of the symbolic rites of passage that mark the ending of one phase of your life and the beginning of another. So we assemble today wearing flowing gowns and funny hats to mark one of life's important inflection points. In his book, Transitions, William Bridges described three phases common to all important changes in our lives. Endings, followed by a temporary neutral zone, and then finally, new beginnings. Now your life as an undergraduate or a graduate student, one of late nights at the Taylor Tea Room and cold beers at the Posse, has come to an end. Okay, you can still drink beer at the Posse, but you've reached an ending nonetheless. Commencement provides a waypoint, one of many on your journey, and a time to look back and to celebrate. 
Now looking back, do you remember why you picked UT? For me, it was the beauty of Austin and the Highland Lakes where we vacationed in my youth. Uh, with nine brothers and sisters, I was fortunate to have two siblings that attended UT before me and guided me in those early days. Registration was held here at the Frank Irwin Center with students racing from table to table to sign up for classes on paper rosters. Tuition was $4 per semester hour. I lived in the famous Goodall Wooten dorm down on the drag, sort of a high-rise version of Animal House. I started in petroleum engineering, and at my first meeting of the student chapter of the Society of Petroleum Engineers, a senior stood up and declared, when you graduate from the University of Texas with a degree in petroleum engineering, employers will ask you two questions, how much money and what color car? <laughs> now given that I was working uh, part-time as a doorman to pay my room and board, I liked the way he talked. <laughs> but when the bottom dropped out of the oil and gas industry in the early 1980s, I made the transition to mechanical engineering, figuring that an ME degree would, would uh, allow me to go in multiple directions. And perhaps you made similar course corrections uh, during your days at UT, and your appearance here suggests that you made the transition just fine. And unexpected changes and outcomes will be a predictable part of your adventure after graduation. Now looking back on all the courses that you took, it's easy to remember your favorite ones and the most difficult. Often for me, they were the same. And over time, you won't remember the many engineering problems you solved. OK, maybe perhaps one or two. I recall my physics 301 professor who gave an extra credit problem that went something like this. You are out on a date traveling in a 1965 Chevrolet Bel Air with bench seats and vinyl seat covers. Your date weighs 120 pounds and is wearing a blue silk dress. The coefficient of friction between vinyl and silk is 0 0.05. You're approaching a right-hand turn with a quarter mile radius. How fast do you have to take the turn for your date to slide over next to you? <laughs> now, now that is an engineering problem worth solving. Okay. Now thankfully, today's graduation class has 112 women, so I suspect the extra credit questions have evolved in the last 25 years. Now, perhaps more than anything, you'll remember the people you traveled the road with, your classmates and the professors and staff who make the UT Cockrell School what it is. Now, as a mechanical engineer, I chose operations research as a minor, and that allowed me to meet Paul Jensen and John Bard. They taught me the essentials of industrial engineering and gave me a system worldview that forever changed the way I looked at human endeavors. Now, as a sophomore, I applied to the cooperative engineering program and was sent to replace a graduating senior at a small machine shop in South Austin. Now, the owners basically had this guy running the whole place, sort of uh, indentured servitude. And I looked at him, and, and he looked at me, and I could see it in his eyes, run. So I went back to the co-op office and I said I wanted another option, which was not warmly received. But they relented and finally said, OK, Lockheed has an opening, which helped me get to where I am today. And sometimes saying no is the right answer. Now, as a co-op, I had a chance to design my first factory. I'd call Paul and John and I'd describe what I was doing and how I was applying my education. And although they were not there to look over my shoulder, I really reveled at the chance to apply what I had learned. And John served as my graduate advisor five years later and remains a friend today. And as you graduate today, the faculty graduate with you. The knowledge they imparted expands both their influence and yours on the world. And remember them, you will. So while your graduation marks the end of one chapter of your life, your relationship with the university will endure. Still, like the singer in the 1999 song, Closing Time, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> it's time to move on to the next phase of your life. Now, un no doubt, there's some uncertainty about the road ahead. You are passing through a, a neutral zone, like stepping off a curb and crossing where you can't quite make out 
the other side of the street yet. Now, whether you have a job already or are going on to graduate school or neither, this period of transition can be unsettling and at the same time liberating. No worries, this period of uncertainty it won't last long for your new beginnings await. Dr. Steve Nichols once told our class the great thing about being an engineer is that within two to three weeks' time, you can acquire the working knowledge you need for just about any technical field, and it's really true, and soon you'll find yourself in a position to prove it to, to yourself. Now, in my early 30s, I was working on the merger of two aerospace firms, and as the consolidation drew to a close, my boss offered me a chance to pick any assignment I wanted. My family and I moved from Washington, D.C. to San Diego, where I ran the historic Atlas Rocket Factory, which had existed since 1940. Uh, John Glenn once visited there to see the rocket that he flew around the Earth three times. Now, I remember seeing this large factory from the air as I flew in and thinking how lucky I was at, at age 33 to become a plant manager. But I can tell you I was also scared as hell. You too will be airdropped into circumstances that are completely overwhelming. But apply yourself and you'll find your UT engineering education provides the foundation to take on any challenge because you have learned to learn. Your time at UT is but one chapter in a lifetime of continuous learning and risk taking. Now then I received a call from one of my former bosses while I was still in San Diego who asked me to lead our commercial satellite programs in San Jose, California. Now at the time, I couldn't tell you the difference between a spacecraft bus and a payload, or between a low Earth orbit and a geostationary one. We didn't have the design-build fly labs like the one in today's aerospace engineering department, where some of today's graduating engineers designed and subsequently flew their own rockets and satellites to orbit. But I was needed there, so I went, and it sounded like an excellent adventure. Now, before long, I would find myself standing in Moscow in front of Lenin's tomb, talking to a friend in the US on an Iridium satellite phone, uplinking to a spacecraft that I built. The next day, I flew to Kazakhstan to see a proton Russian launch on one of our commercial satellites that 10 years later still provides phone service to all of Russia, Asia, and Europe, and later had a chance to go to French Guiana and, of course, Cape Canaveral. So 25 years ago, sitting where you are today, I never would have guessed where my UT degree would take me. Open yourself up to the possibilities and you will never look back with regret, only with amazement. UT shaped me, as did the experiences along the way. And as you travel on your journey, look for ways to collect experiences as merit badges. And each thing you do, look for ways to achieve double points or triple points. Seek out challenging assignments that leverage your UT degree while at the same time contributing to the profession of engineering and to our society. Now more than any other generation, yours is passionate about environment and community involvement. Engineering's from the civil, architectural, and environmental engineering uh, recently completed a life-altering assignment in the Coila Desert of Mexico. And through the Engineering Without Borders organization at UT, students help to improve a community's access to clean water by establishing a distribution systems in Mexico. Be part of something larger than yourself and practice engineering to not only make a living, but to make other lives better. Now, Dean Fenvis, I know you're proud of this class. You're one of the first, it's one of the first to graduate under your watch as Dean. The Cockrell School of Engineering is glad to have you back. It's been 23 years since you were an assistant professor at UT, and the university is fortunate to have you create a new mission for the school based on educating leaders and creating and distributing knowledge. Now, as a member of the engineering board, I know the emphasis that you place not only on academic excellence, but on uh, leadership. And many of today's graduates participated in Ramshorn's retreat and graduate leadership sessions that provide the professional uh, training needed for engineering leadership and ethics. Graduates, you, you can rely on your early leadership experience, whether they come from sports, professional societies, or your project work. They all count and they all scale towards the challenges you'll face in your career. For me, each new leadership assignment 
brought new leadership challenges. In 2003, I was selected to run a company that provides training for all of our military services. The war effort was just ramping up and coalition forces had suffered many losses due to improvised explosive devices. I went to a breakfast meeting and an Army general challenged all of us in industry. He said, you're doing nothing to help the war effort. And we felt bad because we were working on solutions for tomorrow's problems, but not addressing the needs of today. We immediately went back to the office. A small group of engineers came up with a way to reuse our software, add some gaming technology, and adapt it for convoy drivers and crews. We bought parts on eBay. We ate lots of late night pizza. And in three weeks' time, we completed a prototype training device that led to contracts for dozens more. Tens of thousands of soldiers and Marines have since received training in their simulators, and it's the only such training they've received before deployment. Now, while our rapid response was a success, I challenge you all to look for ways to identify and solve our society's hardest problems before being asked. Do, do so, and you'll never lack for work. On your journey, it's important to balance fun and work. When I graduated from UT 25 years ago, I received a card from a relative, and it read something like this. Congratulations on your recent graduation. Now put your nose to the grindstone, and 10 years from now, people will look at you and say, what the hell happened to your nose? <laughs> so don't be that person. Have fun in your work. It's, it's the essential ingredient and creativity and fulfillment. If you find yourself not having fun, stop and try a different approach because you're probably not doing it right. And remember that your first job after graduation is just that, your first. Each is a step in the adventure and will help you grow to be the person that you aspire to be. As an entering freshman, I went to one of the last performance at the Armadillo World Headquarters to hear one of the popular musicians of my day, Steve Forbert. He sang a song with the lyric, it takes a whole lot of help to make it on your own. The parents and sponsors who helped you prepare for UT and sacrificed so you could attend here today are with you either in person or in spirit to help you make this rite of passage. One of the graduates here today, Carrie Olson, is joining that same space company that I started with 27 years ago. Congratulations to Bernie and Jude Olson and to all the parents and sponsors here today for this is your graduation day as well. Graduates, your journey is about to begin. Waste no time. Each of you is on a unique path and you bear a ticket stamped, good for this trip only, no transfers. Your life lays out in front of you like an uncharted wilderness, one to be discovered in your own way, at your own pace. Congratulations on completing your UT engineering education, and best of luck as you create your own excellent adventure. Thank you.